خمسین رو جلده بیت سیتی سرو نیلو لگروشه ور آی مادر لی خور بیوی این آی می ار فاهی از به For unto us a child is born, a child is born, a child is born. Mum and stepdad made their trek from a town called Nazareth. This little king born, but not born into plushness. This little king sleeping rough with straw for a mattress. This is the one true story that matters. Matter of fact, it's been told right through the ages, from Bethlehem to the helm of history's pages. For unto us a child is born, a child is born, a child is born. As King's arrivals go, it was nothing to write home about. Red carpet treatment, stop pretending. There were no pat pics here. There was no hashtag trending. His birth was prophetically predicted. But to those not looking, it was pretty unexpected. See, it was not until eyes were set on the major Magi Messiah map that it was even suspected that he was the threat, the prime suspected to rule with compassion better than Herod ever did. For unto us a child is born, a child is born, a child is born. Wrapped in Swaddling cloths, this little bundle of saviour, God in the flesh had his nap time in a manger. We're talking the almighty arranger of all things, the very one who spoke space into place, who determined the destination of every starlit constellation, had no place, no room in the inn, but guess you couldn't call ahead, couldn't send a text, hey, we're en route, so make up a bed. Instead, This little king cutched in and was cushioned in straw as he lay down his sweet head. For unto us a child is born, a child is born, a child is born. See, the most king, the most creator of everything, the most sustainer of all living things, had the most humble of human beginnings. This king didn't come as you'd expect it, but this king brought a kingdom for the unexpected. This king came to lift up the unprotected, a branch from the family tree of Jesse. Yes, he came fully invested. See, he saw the needs of those who need it. He came for the poor, spiritually broke and defeated. Royalty arrived back. Not as a visitor, because this little king came to slum it as the resident saviour. For unto us a child is born, a child is born, a child is born, and his name is Jesus.
Chapter 1, verse 26, 35, and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. The angel left her. Amen.
Luc chapitre 2, versets 1 et 3 à 7. En ce temps-là, parut un édit de César Auguste, ordonnant un recensement de toute la terre. Tout allait se faire inscrit, chacun dans sa ville. Joseph aussi monta dans la Galilée, de la ville de Nazareth, pour se rendre en Judée, dans la ville de David appelée Bethléem, parce qu'il était de la maison et de la famille de David. Afin de se faire inscrire avec Marie, sa fiancée, qui était enceinte, pendant qu'ils étaient là, le temps où Marie devait accoucher arriva. Et elle enfanta son fils premier-né, elle l'émaillota et le coucha dans une crèche, parce qu'il n'y avait pas de place pour eux dans l'hôtellerie.
verse 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, presents God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rest. Since the day the angel came, it seemed that everything had changed. The only certain thing was the child that moved within on the road that would not end, winding down to Bethlehem. So far away from home Just a blanket on the floor Of a vacant cattle store But there the child was born She held him in her arms And as she laid him down to sleep She wondered would it always be Bitter, yet so sweet And did she see there In the straw by his head A thorn And did she smell In the air On that star Seers tumble down the centuries. A virgin shall conceive, God with us, Prince of Peace. Man of sorrow, strangest name, all Joseph, there it comes again. So bitter, yet so sweet. Oh, 
Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 12 says Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judah during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterward some men were studied. The stars, the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judah. They asked, for this is what prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judah. You are by on men, means the last of the leading cities of Judah. For, for from you will come, come a leader who will judge my people Israel. Say Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and, and found them from them the exact time to the, the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with this instruction. Go and make, make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know, so that it too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their ways they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of, of them until they stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they kneeled down and worshipping worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and present them to him. They will return to their country by another road, seeing God have won them in a dream, not go back to Herod.
Jean 1 les versets 1 à 14. Au commencement était la parole, et la parole était avec Dieu, et la parole était Dieu. Elle était au commencement avec Dieu. Toutes choses ont été faites par elle, et rien de ce qui a été fait n'a été fait sans elle. En elle était la vie, et la vie était la lumière des hommes. La lumière lui dans les ténèbres, et les ténèbres ne l'ont point reçue. Il y eut un homme envoyé de Dieu, son nom était Jean. Il vint pour servir de témoin, pour rendre témoignage à la lumière, afin que tous crussent par lui. Il n'était pas la lumière, mais il parut pour rendre témoignage à la lumière. Cette lumière était véritable lumière, qui, en venant dans le monde, éclaire tout homme. Elle était dans le monde, et le monde a été fait par elle, et le monde ne l'a point connue. Elle est venue chez les siens, et les siens ne l'ont point reçue. Mais à tous ceux qui l'ont reçue, à ceux qui croient en son nom, elle a donné le pouvoir de devenir enfants de Dieu, lesquels sont nés, 
non du sang, ni de la volonté de la chair, ni de la volonté de l'homme, mais de Dieu. Et la parole a été faite chair, et elle a habité parmi nous, pleine de grâce et de vérité. Et nous avons contemplé sa gloire, une gloire comme la gloire du Fils unique, venu du Père. Hi, my name is Richmond Wandera. I am the senior pastor of New Life Baptist Church in Kampala, Uganda. I'm joining you now at this special Kara service to celebrate the God of the unexpected. When I was eight years old, my father was taken away from us and our family was thrown out into poverty. But God used a 15-year-old girl to turn my life around, the most unexpected person who did the most unexpected thing for her age. And here I am today, the God of the unexpected.
See, 12 months ago, none of us would have foreseen that this Christmas would be so different. I mean, think about the grandmothers this Christmas. Many of them we might not see their children open those gifts and they will miss those smiles and giggles. Now think about how this Christmas carol services have been burned. Many, many, many people who are watching this Christmas carol service, this might be the only service you watch. Our world has changed forever. Think about these family members who are going to spend time with each other. This time, as they are celebrating, they will be behind masks, if at all. Now, while you and I are facing challenges and uncertainty of the future, think about what might be happening in the minds of children who are in poverty right now. I look and see it around my community a lot. Whichever family you visit during this season, it is darker. It feels like Christmas is reminding them of how poor they are. You and I, as we think about ourselves and our plight, let's remember children in poverty. Let me share with you just a few stories. There was a dear lady called Beatrice. Beatrice had five children on her, of her own, and she brought two more in as her new adopted children, and she was very happy about that. For many years now, she's celebrated that decision until now. The food that she had was not enough to serve her five children, but now she had to extend it to eight. This has been a very difficult year. Beatrice has reached out for help because she's lost her job and she's unable to continue. Now you think about people like Julius. Julius was another young man who had just gotten married and they were waiting for their newborn child. And as they're waiting for this newborn child, the lockdown hits and cars are restricted from being on the road. She ended up being taken to hospital. Julius's wife ended up being taken to hospital in a beat up construction lorry truck because those were among the categories of vehicles that were allowed on the street. Because of that rough ride to the hospital on the terrible, terrible roads that they drove on, it affected the mother. It affected the child and Julius lost his dear child. She was heartbroken. When I think about Julius, my heart continues to remember that this has been a dark year for many, as we have learned that many families actually lost many, many members who were not able to make it to hospital during this lockdown. Now I think about several other people, like the people in Kasese. Many, many, many children are right now struggling in camps because Kasese is going through a double tragedy, a double tragedy. Already they're in the lockdown, but beyond that, they're now experiencing floods and an avalanche of rocks that's coming down the Renzori mountain. And I'm, uh, when I visit Kasese all the time, I'm surrounded by all these children and the people, and we are almost in that place of confusion. But again, with cause of the Ministry of Compassion, help has come. People in Kasese right now are finding hope as compassion continues to intervene. I think about people in my community, especially those that are sponsored. I mean, they are putting aside their fear because hope is coming. I can tell you this, that there is never a better time for a child to be in compassion than now. Because if the child is in compassion, both the child and the caregiver are taken care of. Now I think about that and I celebrate the Minister of Compassion, but then I look around and see all these other children that still need to be sponsored. And this is why I come with such passion to you to say, look, we can actually make a difference. We can extend the, that hope line farther and bring in more children to be rescued. I celebrate what God has done in my life. He intervened unexpectedly. See, while we face various unexpected challenges, Christ always points us back to the God of the unexpected. He does that constantly through the scriptures. And circumstances may change from generation to generation, from individual to individual, from time to time, but the message remains the same. God always intervenes in the most unexpected ways. Christmas is all about God's surprise gift to us all. Now, when we think about how God operates, you can almost summarize that he operates in an upside down kingdom. He's a God who believes in servant leadership. Just to mention servant leadership in my context, it's a confusing concept. It's upside down servant leadership, but this is a God of servant leadership. This is a God who, when he wanted to save the world, he did not send a political leader, one who was raised in a palace, a strong warrior. He sent a baby. Think about that. 
God is the God of the unexpected. You and I are gathering today to consider the God of the unexpected and what this might mean for you and for me. The God of the upside down kingdom. Let us arise and look to the God of the unexpected. But as we look to him, let's also look aside and see the ones whose eyes may not be able to see clearly. Children in poverty. Those who are confused, who have been beaten by poverty. Those who are voiceless, those who cannot fight for themselves. And as God rescues us and answers our prayers, may we answer their prayers as well. I think about what happened to me when I was sponsored. Immediately, my future was brighter. Hope came to me. I think about what happened to my entire family. After I was sponsored, I mean, I look back and we did not lose a single family member after I was sponsored. What a joy to look back and see also the letters of encouragement I received. I don't know a better time than now for you to have somebody to write to and not and say to them, stand your ground, stay strong, I am with you. Let's continue to look to the God of the unexpected. Do not lose heart, do not faint. Words that I heard, such as words like, Richmond, I love you. Richmond, I'm praying for you. Oh, those words touch the very depth of my heart and soul. We can do that this Christmas in the name of Jesus. Let's introduce children to the God who loves them. I ask you now, as you think about the God of the unexpected and you lift your eyes to him, what might he be calling you to do? I look around my community and all I see is opportunities to help rescue children that are currently carrying a weight that's beyond their years. Together, let us release children from poverty. In Jesus' name. Xavira Patnam la cachina es la esas gracias señor porque todo el día de hoy nos permitiste abrir nuestros ojos. Es para agarrar el smaw o como una seña mata. Vicious maha corona virus cura ha padi. I believe that you are the only one who could stop this. Ve ya sus semeñanam que ha hoy. Yo te pido que yo también te Suple las necesidades que ellos puedan estar atravesando. Remove all fears from our hearts. Nosotros caminamos por fe y no por vista, señor. Señor, Dank u wel dat u onze schuilplaats bent. Dank u wel dat u onze schuilplaats bent.
Andreas, Mimi. Lieber Gott, danke, dass du alles so gut im Griff hast. Ich kann nur noch machen, wenn du was in der Matine hast. Wann nie nicht fällt. Lord Jesus, we ask this in your name. Amen.